What's going on, family? You know who it is, your lead pastor, Pastor RJ2, with Jesus in the church right here uh, in Appomattox. And I'm just going to jump right in. Thank you for coming on. But I want to jump right in for this message. Uh, this morning's message, I want it to be an encouraging word uh, to those out there that may be struggling. Um, but I want to end this year strong, and I want you to finish out this year strong as well. So I want to start with a scripture that's going to point to the point of my message for the day, and it's coming from the book of Isaiah, uh, chapter 45, and I'm reading um, verse, starting verse 9 out of the NIV version. And the reason this wise, it says, Woe to those who quarrel with their maker, those who are nothing but potsherds among the potsherds on the ground. Does the clay say to the potter, What are you making? Does your work say the potter has no hands. So the title of this message is let's take a trip down to the potter's house. Let's take a trip down to the potter's house. So first of all, what is a potter? A potter is a craftsman who uses their talents to mold clay into functional pieces that are meant to be put to everyday use. He wants to make vessels that will reap a profit that will be found useful and that will bring honor unto him. This is God's intention as well. He excels in taking old worthless clay and transforming it by his grace into vessels of honor and of glory. He takes those things that are deemed useless or marred and turns them into vessels of honor. So this morning, I am looking to God as he is our potter and we as God people, we are the clay. At times we pray to the Lord, we want your perfect will to be done. Lord, not my will, but your will be done. See, family, we pray for it. We say it, we proclaim it and we profess it. But what we don't realize is this. It is one of the most dangerous things that we can pray in our lives. When you open up your life for the will, the W-I-L-L of God for your life, what he does is he puts you on the will, W-H-E-E-L, on your, your life. One of the most dangerous things to pray is this prayer because the most challenging fight family that I had to fight in my life was not the fight against sin or the fight against the enemy or with a person or a circumstance. But the biggest fight of my life was with God. It was God conforming me to his will for my life. See, it sounds easy, but it's the difficulty that comes with a fight. See, God put me on the potter's wheel and it was very uncomfortable, but he began to shape me. He began to make me, to conform me into his wheel. See, family, I found out we don't celebrate and we don't talk about chasing after our purpose and our destiny because we are then placed on the potter's wheel. Let me give you an example which can be found with the children of Israel. When God gave them their purpose, he also gave them a promise that reflected the end result. When God told them about taking them out of the place of bondage and placing them in the land that flowed with milk and honey, the place of promise, I guarantee you that they didn't have a problem with the end result. They didn't have a problem with the purpose, the destiny, the land, or the promise. But here it is. They had a problem with the potter's wheel. After they spent 40 years in the desert wandering because they had to go through his process, God then told them it is time to go into the promise. And guess what, family? God wasn't trying to get the promised land ready for them. But guess what? He was what trying to get them ready for the promised land. God had them on the potter's wheel. And I want to submit to you this morning that some of the things that you are going through right now in this season are uncomfortable. But you need to understand that God is working on you, even though you may be stressed, you may be frustrated, you may be burdened or spiritually drained. 
God has not abandoned you or forsaken you. You just need to understand that you're on the potter's wheel. Let's get into the scripture. Let's go down to the potter's house this morning, if you don't mind. God tells Jeremiah, I want to show you how I work in the lives of believers. So let's look at Jeremiah chapter 18, and I'm going to be reading verses one through six out of the New King James Version. It reads on this wise, it says, the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, arise and go down to the potter's house. And there I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house. And there he was making something at the wheel and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter says the Lord? Look as the clay is in the potter's hand. So are you in my hand. Write this down. This is the first thing I want you to write down that has to happen in this process. Number one, the potter has to choose the selection of clay. A good potter knows that he can't just use any type of clay and regular clay won't work. It has to be a clay that has a particular quality that makes it usable for the service. This is important because God chose you and that should be enough right there to give God praise. Number two is this. The potter has to separate the clay. See, we celebrate that we were selected for God's purpose, but we struggle with separation. We struggle when God starts to separate us from some things we love. Places and people, which includes at time our family. There is a re reason why God has to close some doors, cut off what's not necessary, and then also rearrange some people in your life because after the selection, then comes separation. There is a reason why you're not going to fit in. And guess what, fam? I had to understand this for my life in my own reality. Here's number three. Number three is the potter sanctifies the clay. This is where we got a problem at. Number three, the potter sanctifies the clay. The clay has been sanctified because it has been washed. It has been cleansed because if the clay is cleansed from all hidden debris, it is then now eligible for transformation. If the clay hasn't been cleansed, when the next process begins, the impurities and imperfections will be revealed. See, everybody, family, wants transformation. Everybody wants elevation. Everybody wants celebration. But excuse my language, but don't nobody want sanctification. But the part of demand sanctification meaning set apart for the master's good use. See, everybody wants the recognition. Everybody wants to be in the light. Everybody wants a title. See, everybody wants to pat on the backs and be talked about in a good way. But here it is. Nobody wants to get set apart to be washed for sanctification. And when you skip over this part, you are setting yourself up to be a cracked vessel. And when we look around today, a lot of what we see is cracked leaders, cracked husbands, cracked wives, cracked women of God, cracked men of God. Everybody wants to be celebrated and everybody wants to be used by God, but nobody wants to be sanctified. Family, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be a cracked vessel. I don't want to be a cracked husband, a father, a leader, and I definitely don't want to be a cracked pastor. Number four, here it is. The potter puts the clay on the spinning wheel. Whew. Here's another tight one. When the potter puts the clay on the wheel, it's going, it's going to be constantly spinning. When that happens, the wheel is constantly spinning, but you have to understand that the potter is also constantly working. In other words, 
It is a process with a purpose. The process is very difficult, but the purpose is destiny. The process is ugly while the end purpose is beautiful. See, family, everything in your life may be spinning, but you need to understand that God, the potter, is working and you got to believe that he's working some things out for the greater result. Here's number five. The potter uses water as a tool to form and to shape you. Listen to what it says in Ephesians chapter five. And I'm going to read reading verse 25 through 27 of the New King James Version. It says, husband, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. See, the potter uses the water to soften the clay in order to shape it and to conform it. The word of God is also the water of God. Let me say this right here. One of the worst things that you can do when your life is spinning and spinning out of control is to take a leave of absence from the word of God, to take a leave of absence from the church and to take a leave of absence from God himself. That's the worst thing that you should do when your life is spinning, because the first thing you should do when you are spinning is to get up under the water, which is the word of God. This is why when you come to church on Sundays and you are feeling a bad type of way, and when you get up under the word that goes forth, it begins to turn you around. See, I need some people who will come into the church house, not worrying about what kind of shoes they got on or worrying about what kind of clothes they got on because they are more concerned about getting a word that would change their life around. Here's number six, and I'm about, I'm about at the end. Number six is the potter then uses his hands. See, family, no matter how much spinning is going on in your life, you can't be shaped and conform without his hands being on you. So you have to have the potter's touch, the touch of the potter, because he knows exactly how much pressure to apply in order to shape and to mold you to the potter desired image. But what we need to understand is something right here, because we got to get this. Something went wrong in the process. Jeremiah 18, four says, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. Please understand this. It was nothing wrong with the spinning wheel. There was nothing wrong with the water and there was nothing wrong with his hands, but there was something wrong with the clay. And I need you to un understand this, that even though that you are a work in progress, you are in the right place. See, you are in the right place, but here's the issue. You cannot fix yourself. See, the clay can do nothing without the potter. You can't pull yourself out of the pit without the potter. You can't save yourself without the potter. It doesn't matter how many people you know, how many degrees you have, or how smart you may be. It doesn't even matter because you can't do nothing without the potter. Verse four says, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hands of the potter. See, the potter has a choice. He can destroy it. He can scrap it, throw it away or discard it and start over with something brand new. But God has the power to destroy what he has made. So that means that the clay is at the mercy of the potter. But we serve a merciful, graceful, a long suffering and loving God. How many out there this morning 
You're glad that God looked at you with all your imperfection, flaws and all, and decided to keep working on you. I am so glad he kept working on me. See, verse four said that he made it again into what? Another vessel. God decided to keep working on it a little bit more. He kept beating it. He kept kneading it. He kept rolling it a little bit more. And ultimately, he is going to reshape it. And so how many out there this, this morning can thank God right there where you are and praise God for not giving up on you? I am so thankful. See, family, taking a trip down to the potter's house was a story on grace. Can you praise him this morning for grace? See, we shouldn't need anybody to pump us up or to prime us to praise God. That's why David said, I'm going to praise him all by myself because David knew he was flawed from the very beginning. And just like David, he chose to keep us even when he could have thrown us away. He could have denied me, but he didn't do it. Even when I lied, he didn't give up on me. When I made mistakes, when I dropped the ball, family, when I gave up, he did not give up on me. I thank God for his hands are still on me. I thank God that his hands is still on my life. He is his the last one. And I want to close with number seven. This is the last one in this whole process. Number seven is the firing process, the firing process. Nobody wants to go into the fire. Nobody wants to go through the fire because we are afraid that we're going to be what burn up and be consumed. See, one of the most important parts of creating pottery is the firing stage. Once a clay item received its glazing, its sculpting, a potter places it then in the kiln furnace. The hot temperature in the fiery furnace will allow the clay to solidify, to get hard and to gain stability. But here's the main point that I want you to get before I close. The purpose of placing it in the fire is to improve the strength of that clay object. God said, when you go into the fire, you're not going to be burned. You're not going to be consumed because it's in the fire is where he's going to move all of the impurities, all of the imperfection. And when you come out of the fire, go through the fire because you're not going to be consumed. You will come out solidified. You will come out on stability. You are going to come out and you're going to be stronger than you was when you went in. See, family, there's a blessing by going down to the potter's house and being placed on the potter's wheel because it's in his hand that's when God is going to shape you to make you and conform you into the person that he wants you to be in not just in this season but what for the next season let us pray Father God, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for this time that you have given me to speak a word in season to your people that, Father God, that we can finish strong. When things may not be going our way and when things are in that's in our lives and we find ourselves we're spinning and we're spinning and it feel like we're out of control, help us to understand and to know that long as we're on the spinning wheel, that we are in your hands. And if we're in your hands, everything is going to be okay. So, Father, I just ask on today, help us, Father God, those that may who have been listening in, they'll take something from this message, glean something from this message, and apply within their life to be able to finish out this year strong. Lord, I thank you for this short time and this short, profound message to speak a word in season to your people. And I ask on today, Father God, for your hands to continue to be upon us and that you will continue to strengthen us in the things that you've called for us to do. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray this prayer. Amen and amen. God bless your family for allowing me to speak a word in season to you that you can be able to finish out this year strong. But sometimes we got to take a trip down to the potter's house. God bless you and I love you. And I see you back here, same time, same place on the next occasion. God bless.